So this, this is uh, not the exact rim fire that my brother-in-law uses to compete with, but it's pretty much modeled. Yes. <laughs> pretty, pretty close, because we use him as a guinea pig. Um, so you go to the store, 400 bucks out of yep. the box. What do you do to this gun? Well, again, it's not an AR, so let's put a vertical grip on it. Yep. There's a lot of them on the market. We're kind of partial to this one. I don't know why, but we are really, a little, little really, bit of a little bit of nepotism here. But anyways, we're it partial. Really is the best one, although I like the penguin, not. Uh, well, I love the penguin. Yes. The tuxedos for all the whiners out there who didn't like the hollow space, but we listened. We listened. Give the and, customer what they wanted. And we gave the customer what they wanted, and it turns out to be an awesome grip. It's actually way lighter than the penguin because it's not hollow. It could be a lot yeah. thinner. Anyways, what do you do when you pick this up out of the box? Well, one. You gotta be cool. So titanium muzzle brake. There you go. Absolutely no reason for it. Oh, except to hear the subsonic round. Okay. Without hearing protection. To make sure you don't get muzzle obstructions. Wait, hold, hold, hold. Barrel obstructions. You can shoot with that brake without with, hearing protection? Oh yeah, for sure. Shooting subs. Subs, okay. Subs. Yeah, let's I'll call it caveat. <laughs> subsonic ammunition. You shoot up. It's not going to really hurt your ears if you shoot a normal 22. Yeah. But you're going to be like, what? It, it's not going to be. You're not going to be like, oh, that hurt. But you're going to be like, that was not and nice. And definitely not indoors, outside. Yes. <laughs> so we shoot subs. I have a Hellfire on my CZ. Okay. And um, all you hear is the click of the trigger and the foof out of the brake. I'll have to try that. So it's, uh, it's quite entertaining. So I mean, got to have a cool muzzle device because you've got to be cool. But um, other things we've done recently is... A product request by the customers was a bull shroud. Bull shroud. And these just barely hit the website, like less than a week ago. Hmm. So these are brand new. And then the Rimfire does come with a threaded handle, uh, just like that Ruger down there. But again, we, um, I don't know if I can get this back in. I don't know how it goes. There, there we go. go. Um, but again, we bent it so that it's closer to the receiver, mm -hmm. it's easier to run, and we also made it for the Ruger um, American... Ruger American Rimfire. Yeah, the Ruger American Rimfire, this guy. And there's like a billion models of this yes. gun. But we actually made it for this, but they're the same action. Very cool, yes. You can use it there. The um, Ruger, what is it, the LTR? Yes. So is good. not. Okay. It that's... is slightly different. It uses a different scope base. Okay. Slightly longer. All right. Just just enough that you have to make a new skew. So, <laughs> anyways, so we made it for the Ruger um, American Rimfire. Takes you know 1022 mags. Basically the same thing as the as the Precision. So again, you can you can take. The, I don't know if anyone makes a, ch a chassis or anything for that. You know what we should tell. I think MDD. You know what we should do is we should tell Sharps Bro make a chassis to replace all of the Ruger stuff on here. That's what we should do. Because there's been requests for it. There's a lots of yeah. people that have asked. I'll have to mention that to Sharp Bros. Yeah. I've been asked to make Especially, a chassis yeah, for can, it. If you can do something that will replace it with an AR. Well, this is like, is this actually, this is, that's actually metal, but this is all plastic yeah. right here. Anyways, so that's an upgrade. And then down here we got the well tail, <clears throat> which again, the concept is dropping the mag mm -hmm. Um, without having to come off the gun all the way up. Because it comes with 10, I think it comes with 15 round mags, so they stick out, or you can get the 10 round, and they sit flush. So it just, it's an improvement on the design. We didn't want to just come straight down. Yeah. So we, we angled it a little bit. We just launched the video on our YouTube channel that explains the well tail. Um, and we'll link it above here. Yeah, it explains the well tail and how to install it. So the other thing we have in the pipeline, I don't know if it's quite ready yet, but we have a, a, a new firing pin okay. for it because, um, again, they're even like I chipped my CZ one too, probably because I was dry firing when I probably shouldn't be. Um, yeah. So you do the same thing, your Ruger Precision. You can chip them and break them. And so we're going to make one. Caveat is go buy a drywall plug and shove it in your chamber before you dry fire so you don't chip your firing pin because we're going to do them out of heat tree to 17.4. Okay. So I don't, we'll put a caveat on the product description. Please don't dry fire with this. If you hurt your barrel, it's your fault. Um, I want reliability, not the ability to dry fire. So if you want to dry fire, 
take the five minutes to swap your pin back to one that you've either shortened or you've already broken. Oh, and I see one so. other difference you have is a different scope base on there. Yeah, I don't remember what it comes with. It comes with a 20 or, th no, it comes with a 30. 30, 30. It comes with a 30, but so what we did is we designed one with the bubble level. So pick it, no barrel sweeping. We put a bubble level in it. It is useful, it's quite helpful. Um, if you don't want stuff hanging off, even behind it, I can still see through the scope and see the level, so. And it'll definitely help with leveling a scope. Yeah, and it helps with leveling the scope and a bunch of other things, so. Yeah, so we got all sorts of stuff for the Ruger rimfire. Um, again, cheek pad out of the box, grip out of the box. Timney does make a trigger for it. Yes. Which I would upgrade. If it's my personal choice, I don't like blades. I hate them. Nor do I like the Ruger trigger. People- It's a little gritty. People tell me there's nothing wrong with the trigger. I'm kind of a snob because I run high-end triggers and I was, I was at Sportsman's Warehouse today. Yes. Because I go and play with the guns at the counter because What else do you do as a gun guy? I don't stock a billion guns. So I, they had this uh, brand I had never seen before. But it looked like, um, it's like SARS or something. It was all metal, beautiful gun. Hmm. It was like 900 bucks. Okay. Um, very much felt like a Shadow 2 copy. Okay. Well, just, it, it definitely is a comp gun. It's heavy, full barreled, all You're still. Yeah, handgun. Okay, yeah. Yes, Sorry. Yeah, okay. I'm, Sorry, I'm handgun. I'm We're like, talking handgun. I'm like, I'm like, I don't think SAR imports. So SAR is a Turkish company. Yes, uh, that's who it is. It's SARS. They yeah. do handguns. Yes. And it's very much like a CZ clone, Shadow clone. Oh, yeah. It felt yes. like I have a Shadow 2, which I love. Yeah, they copied those designs. Okay, there we go. There we go. We got, we got the uh, Eastern European over here saying that yeah, Turkey so, stole. Ten Tenfoglio, we all stole basically the CZ75 design and they changed a couple little things. Okay, so I racked it yes. and I squoze that trigger. Yes. And I was like, man, I'd love to buy that gun, but that trigger is trash. Yeah. And the dude behind the counter thought it was a great trigger. Yeah. Problem is, is I have a CZ Shadow 2 correct with a worked trigger and it's just butter. Oh, right. Yes. And same with like same with this gun. That trigger's butter. Um, this is a two-stage trigger tech. There's a two-stage Timney, another two-stage Timney. That one has our Tika spring in yes. it. Like these are all phenomenal triggers. I have a like there's nothing wrong with the Ruger Precision trigger. Correct. If that's your level of comfort right. and and ability, or I don't want to say ability, but you're, it's like, I've been driving, so I rode in a luxury car the other okay. day, like a Mercedes hand-stitched leather car. I understand why people drive luxury cars now. Uh, I drove a Chevy Cruze for 12 years, and uh, then I drove eight hours to Vegas in a Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mercedes trigger, not so much on the, on the Ruger. I would say basically a one, I would say, I think you're, you're absolutely correct on both sides. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a stock Ruger American trigger. And at a Ruger Media Day, we stock, we shot stock guns out to 2,300 yards with factory ammo, with factory triggers, not broken in or anything. Well, you can also drive a Chevy Cruze across the country. Correct. And it will um, get you there. Correct. And will you say, enjoy the and process? It was fine. Uh, but you're right. It's not the same as shooting something with a nicer trigger. I mean, you just you just rack this guy. You guys won't be able to see this very well, but you rack this and you're like, oh, what is that? Right. And then it's like, oh, that feels okay. And then you rack this guy and you're like, if I can get the bolt handle down. And then you're like, yeah. wow. And we are going to do a uh, separate video comparing all the triggers that are available for the Ruger Precision Rifle. Uh, but it does make it a lot easier. The only caveat I would say with that is if you still don't have your fundamentals down, don't go to a nicer trigger because it's merely going to cover up your yes, lack of a, trigger discipline. A nice trigger will cover up to a point Yes. Um, someone who hasn't mastered the fundamentals of trigger control. Right. Simply because it's a light, typically it's a lighter trigger. Yeah, typically and it's, 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 it's going to break. It's before. crisper and yeah. cleaner and and it's gonna break before you anticipate. Correct. So. So learn, so learn to shoot the hell out of a stock trigger and then you can really appreciate what a good trigger can do for you. Yep. And then you'll be like Aaron and you'll be a snob. <laughs>
I, I am still very much a student of the of the proper ways of shooting. Right. That's the other thing when you get into long range precision is is you can't ever stop being humble yes. and learning. Yeah. I have six years experience. I'm a terrible reloader. I'm an okay long range shooter. Yeah. I'm I'm okay. Uh, but it's like try teaching your teenager how to drive a car. Yeah. Think about all the things, blinkers over your shoulders, all this. Well, that's how long range is. And I feel like I'm barely comfortable now to drive with, with my friends being rowdy in the backseat, you know? So precision rifle is, a, is a, like anything in life. It's a discipline. Stay humble. Shoot more. Suck less. Have fun. And those are some <laughs> awesome words to end the video on. So hopefully that addressed the question of what's nice to have, what's a good upgrade for both the Ruger Precision Rifle, the Ruger American, and the vastly popular and ever-growing Ruger Precision Rimfire. So as always, thank you guys for watching, keep on squatting, and I'll see you in the next video. Diamonds are forever.